by. I really want to give you first a look at this area so people know exactly where this happened at. It's an absolutely beautiful hotel in an absolutely beautiful area of Medellin. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Kari.hq here, live and direct, the voice of Medellin in the streets. Let me show you guys where I'm at today. I'm actually at a crime scene here in Medellin, Colombia, and I'm gonna be showing you the actual hotel where there was an alleged crime that took place uh, this week here in Medellin, or actually a couple weeks ago here in Medellin. And I just wanna give you guys a look around at the exact area of where this happened and the hotel where it happened uh, straight on the ground because I haven't seen that uh, you know out there yet. But basically, if you haven't heard yet, there was an American gentleman uh, that supposedly paid for SEX with two underage young Colombian girls here in Medellin. Um, supposedly, they're around the ages of 12 and 13 years old. And this is the hotel behind me where he took the women um, and committed the crime. And there's actually footage of him from inside the hotel here, which I'll show you, and also of the women exiting the hotel. So let So let me, with no further ado, give you a look at the hotel. Um, I'm gonna turn the camera around and you can check it out. You can see it's called the Gotham Hotel. You can still see the name there, Gotham. You can see it's a suspension and uh, temporary uh, suspension of activity. That's what the sign says on the door. Looks like there's someone in there, uh, security. And then, yeah, he's looking at me, so I don't, I don't wanna go too crazy, but this is the hotel. This is the address, Carrera 37, uh, 8A102. And I'll give you a look around at the area so you guys can know exactly where this is at. So this is a very popular area here of um, Medellin. Actually, right around the corner where I'm walking to now is Parque Geras. And there's also another very famous hotel that's very close called the Charlie Hotel, which you can see now. All right. So... Parque Jettis is actually located right down there. If you go look. And so maybe this man met the women here in Parque Jettis or on Calle Diaz, or maybe it was at a restaurant, I don't know. Um, but what happened was basically he was caught by the police here in Medellin after the crime was committed. See Parque Jettis there. And he was actually taken to jail, booked, and they let him out of jail uh, I'm not sure how long he was in jail, but they let him out and he went back to the United States, supposedly. And now the last thing I've heard is that uh, there's an international warrant or something like that out with Interpol. And, you know, that's kind of the latest on that. Now, there's more um, suspicion or more chatter around the actual owner of that hotel uh, where the crime happened. Um, actually, let's go back to the studio. We could talk more in depth about that part of, of what's going on. So guys, like I was saying down there on the street, it seems like they might be after this hotel owner, this real estate mogul, whatever you want to call it. But what I do know is, um, he's a Canadian national. He's from Canada. It's the guy that owns that hotel, the Gotham hotel and many other properties here in Columbia. Um, and he also uses a company called Casa Coal, which rents out a lot of properties under that signia. So um, it seems like people are out to get this guy who is a foreigner, a real estate owner and investor. Um, and it sounds like I was listening to DC Born Rob's channel a little bit, trying to figure this out. Shout out DC Born Rob. But it sounds like they've complained to him a few times about people bringing underage women back to his property and that's why they have a gripe with this hotel owner this um, investor real estate guy right because 
it seems like they've reported these types of things and he hasn't maybe done the proper steps or really what can you do really but he hasn't taken the steps that they feel are necessary to prevent it from happening again and that seems to be part of the reason that they are pushing out this the name of this hotel out there in the media for one that's something that they usually don't do with these sorts of crimes they'll usually report on the crime but not report the hotel name at least that's what i've seen in previous um criminal you know news stories and things like that so it was shocking to see that they put this uh, hotel on front street for once which i don't think is a bad thing but you know, it's a lot of bad press for the hotel. And I think um, people knew that. And I think it seems like someone maybe in the government or someone that has some type of pool uh, pushed to to put that hotel out there, maybe trying to ruin the reputation of this guy or get the hotel closed down because they haven't done anything about all the underage um, incidences that have happened at these properties owned by or invested by the same guy. So that seems to be the main problem. And I'll roll a little bit of the clip of what DC born Rob was saying. So uh, you have the full context. Part of the mayor's office with this too. Um, I knew there was a reason from the, from the get go. Well, it just, it just stopped me. Why did they keep saying the name of the Gotham hotel hotel? They never say the name of the hotel. Never, ever. I mean, 0.01% do they ever say the name of the hotel, but from the get-go, they started saying the name of the hotel. But it has to do with the owner of the hotel. This owner of the hotel owns quite a few. I'll just say that. The number has varied from thousands to 135. Um, and I'm sure I've stayed in some of his places. It goes, one of the names there goes by the name of Casa Cole. So if you've ever seen Casa Cole, when you rented an Airbnb, that's who you rent it from. Now, one of the articles actually has a back and forth. I wonder if I still have that up. Has a back and forth communication between the hotel and a guy that who, who just got caught before this guy. It's becoming to be an anti-American or anti-gringo sentiment, anti-foreigner sentiment right now. But yeah, I also want to name drop uh, Timothy Livingston. This is the guy that committed these crimes in this instance that really lit the fuse to get all this started. So he's the guy everyone's looking at or looking for. He's the guy everyone's looking for. I'll put his image right here so you guys can be on the lookout. But as DC Born Rob said, it seems like they did some type of um, warrant uh, through Interpol to try to get this man apprehended and brought back to Columbia. Um, because the people here are very upset that the police let this guy out. And according to protocol, the, the, you know, I was hearing that it wasn't the protocol for this guy to be let out and released based on the crime that he did and, you know, everything else involved. But it seems like the police that let him out may be in a little bit of trouble because they let him out. So maybe there were some foul play there. Maybe the guy paid to get out you know, paid the police or the prison people directly to get out or something like that. I don't know. But he's gone. He last thing I heard he was in Florida or somewhere in the US. But out of 190 something countries, it's going to be hard to hide. So um, he'll probably get caught at some point. And, or maybe he's already talking to the government um, or law enforcement through a lawyer or something like that. Who knows? But that's the situation, guys. So, you know, this wouldn't be the place where you expect to see a lot of crimes happening. But it's a different type of crime against kids. And supposedly, there was also some protests on this very street here um, where the locals came and they wanted to either shut down businesses here or um, boycott or something along those lines or protests. I believe Pergamino this coffee shop right here was the only business or something like that that um, said, no, we don't want to involve in the protests and we're just going to stay open and um, and keep and keep selling our products. Whereas the other com uh, businesses in the area shut their doors for the day to do the protest. Um, and so that was what happened, um, supposedly. Now, I wasn't there. I'm hearing this is secondhand. So I wasn't here when the protests actually happened, but 
supposedly um, there were protests here around that subject, really complaining about the problem that we're having with the gringos uh, coming here, committing crimes, getting in trouble, things along those lines, as well as innocent gringos being attacked by Colombians, as well as the issue of inflation that's also powered by gringos and tourism. So there's a lot of different social, economical things going on in this country and in this city specifically that have kind of rocked the foundation of Medellin in recent months and years. So for a lot of people, you'll hear people say things like, it's not the place that, you know, I fell in love with. I even said that sometimes. And, you know, it is what it is. All these factors contribute to, you know, the changes in the new Medellin that we're living in today. But I do want to say, I think tourism is very important to this country and this city. And I think that the locals should definitely consider and be careful about how they approach the topic of tourism and things like that. Um, you know, I'd hate for them to go into an economic depression or downfall because people stop traveling here. Because let's be honest, a lot of their economy is propped up by tourism and things like that and is associated with tourism. And if they develop a hatred towards tourists and it doesn't become, you know, as fun of a place to be, as safe of a place to be, then they're gonna lose a lot of dollars, straight up. And, you know, I don't wanna see that happen. Uh, I want the best for Colombia. I want the best for his people. And I really love this place. I hate to even um, know that it was someone from my country that came here and committed a crime like that. But, you know, it happens. You know, there's, there's Colombian pedophiles as well. They don't just come from the United States, you know. Um, so it happens here too by Colombians. So let's not forget that. Um, but at the same time, I just want everyone that comes out to this country to represent uh, America good if that's where you come from. You know what I mean? Just represent America good um, and, do, and do right by people. But other than that, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys an on the ground look at what's going on here in Medellin and the spot where the crime actually occurred. So. Lock in with your boy, follow my channel, subscribe to my channel, like, comment, all that. Hit me up on Instagram, guys, and book your consultation if you wanna, you know, get the lay of the land out here and guarantee um, that you, you're gonna know more than the rest, you know what I mean? You're gonna have the leg up on, on everybody, so, so for sure. You know, there's a lot of opinions right now about are tourists good or bad for Medellin? You know, I, I think it's no question that it's good. I just think people get really caught up and really like to highlight the bad stuff that goes with it. Um, but this the percentage of bad that comes with that is very small. It just gets the spotlight every time, you know. And, I you know, the, the druggings and things like that, I think, is despicable. Should it happen? That's one thing that you do see a lot of numbers on. But, you know, the the Americans that are killing Colombians and things like that, you don't see that a lot. You see a lot of crime of Colombians on Colombians. So I think that when it is American, it gets 100 times more of the press. But, you know, it is what it is. These guys shouldn't be doing what they were doing in the first place. And unfortunately, um, you know, it's having after effects and affecting all of the gringo community here in Colombia. And I got to say, you know, I really hate that Colombians in some cases feel animosity towards us. You know, I never wanted that to be the case. You know, I love the country. I love the people. You know, bad things happen here, there, everywhere. You can't stop that. But my advice to the Colombians, please try to understand that each person is an individual. And just because one person might do something bad and he's from a certain place doesn't mean that you know, everyone that comes from there is like that and vice versa. You know, we got to do the same with Colombians and treat them as individuals. But all in all, I want you guys to stay safe. Um, keep the shenanigans out of Colombia. If you're coming down here to mess with young girls, young anything, you know, just find another place for that because there's just it's just no we can't take it anymore. It's just bad. It's coming back on everyone else that's living here trying to be peaceful. Right. So. Yeah, get that out of here and, and let's do better. Um, you know, love my country. 
United States of America. And I love the people, but please, we got to represent really good out here. So let's focus on that and let's make Colombia better instead of bringing problems, even though that's not most of what happens. I know Colombia is a lot better from the tourism, whether, you know, people will admit that or not. I think it is. Um, And I don't think you have all the growth here without that. But Hey, it is what it is. Everyone has their opinion. It's your boy, Carde HQ. I want to give you all that live look at what's going on here in Medellin, Colombia. Y'all stay locked into my channel. Like, comment, subscribe, and we out.